Prime Time Local News, serving the Lakeland and Midwest regions. Card collectors gathered this past weekend in Lloydminster to showcase their collections at a local card show. Our Leo Cruzat has the story. It was a chance for collectors to see various different card collections featured at the annual Border City Card Show at Gold Horse Casino last Saturday. So far it seems to be a really good turnout. Chris Brinklow, the organizer of the event, told us how the show got started. Uh, we actually had a small show at Border City Games about a year and a half ago and I thought, well, it wasn't really that big of a turnout, but we could do better if we just put a little bit more effort into it. So it's growing and it's fantastic to see because uh, this hobby is growing, uh, the city is growing, and uh, we're actually raising money for a fantastic organization right here in our own community. Sport cards are not the only thing featured in the event. Some famous card games such as Yu-Gi-Oh, Pokemon, and Magic the Gathering will also showcased. Despite being called the Border City Card Show, the event also welcomed various collectibles from jerseys, posters, and even replica rings. <laughs> and you don't get that anymore. Gerald Miller, one of the collectors, told us how did he got started collecting sport cards. Well, I started collecting uh, sports memorabilia, and Grandpa was a card collector too, so he had some of the baseball, uh, the Beehive baseball cards. So I got them, and that kind of triggered that off, but collecting already, you're always searching and looking for the next avenue of what you're going to collect. He even showed us some of his collections. Uh, Edmonton Oilers, uh, amazing hockey player, smart hockey player, uh, played for numerous different years. Of course, then when you have Wayne Gretzky, you got to have some of his fellow teammates. You know, there's Mike Messier, all kinds of different uh, uh, players of his. Ben Scrivens was also in the event doing a meet and greet with different fans, and he himself remembers the time he played in AGHL. Yeah, it's great. Uh, I took the drive out from Edmonton out to, to Lloyd this morning. Uh, it's a, a familiar ride. I used to play in the AJHL, um, you know, for a couple different teams. So the, the drive out to, to Lloyd is a familiar one. Proceeds will go to Lloyd Minster Sexual Assault Services. And according to Brinklow, the card show will return on October. Lee Cruzat, Primetime, Local News. New hairstyles and extravagant makeup looks shocked the crowds as the Border Beauty Showcase came to town. Student hairstylists, makeup artists, high school students and more gathered at Lakeland College for the Border Beauty Showcase. Barbers got to show their stuff in front of a live audience and local businesses got to share their products with the student population. This was the first year for the event and local hairstyling students were happy to see so many co uh, categories people could compete in. It is a student-led competition and it is our first annual show and there's a live barber competition and an avant-garde competition. Um, there's also high schools, updos and makeup. This event is also a great way for the Lloydminster beauty industry to gain exposure. It can bring a lot of attention to local businesses and beauty professionals and just shines the light on what hairstylists and barbers really do. It also brings like the young kids into the industry like us who are just going to school, getting out, working to be an apprentice and then hopefully get our journeyman in that. It just helps us find our jobs. Lakeland College hopes to host more shows like these in coming years. Concerns about drought dominated the recent Alberta Municipalities Convention. Mayors came away with the message from the government to prepare a drought plan. I sat down with Cold Lakes Mayor Craig Copeland to talk about drought and the plan they've come up with. I'm speaking with the mayor of Cold Lake today and Craig I know that you told me uh, previously uh, following the uh, Alberta Municipalities Conference that drought and uh, the dry conditions uh, are weighing heavily on a lot of people's minds, um, provincial governments, etc. Um, and now uh, the city of Cold Lake has uh, come up with some changes or some, some policies I guess with uh, regard to water usage. Yeah well, we're going to what we introduced was uh, at, at corporate priorities was sort of a set of standard or measuring sticks. Um, you know, the city uh, is really blessed with a big body of water. So we're not really worried in terms of drinking water or water supply. We're really not worried uh, with this whole drought condition. We're not like a lot of the southern communities that are drawing from a creek, a river, 
uh, where you know their their head pressure has gone way down. We're pretty fortunate. But what we want to make sure, because the province is asking all municipalities to have a plan, so we introduced a plan, and uh, we have big holding reservoirs that uh, the water comes in from the lake, it's treated, and then goes into big reservoirs uh, that the city owns. And so the the policy introduced is if the if the if the head pressure in the uh, in the reservoirs go down about fifty percent, you know we do have an issue then, and so it will trigger. Uh, the beginning of a sort of a four-step process. Uh, we won't cut people off water. Uh, what we're doing is introducing things like simple things like uh, you can't water your lawn maybe once a week or during a certain beginning in the morning or late in the evening type of things. So little different measuring sticks as we get impacted um, in Coal Lake. But, but you know, nobody in, in the city has to be worried in terms of we're not going to have water in our lake. We're fortunate. We've got a big basin. We're drying from 100 feet down in the lake so we're not going to be infected that way now the shoreline around coal lake people are going to notice this year the lake is down a lot and probably near the lowest i've ever seen it uh, and i've been living here since 85. that'll be more of a concern for the, uh, the people that have uh, boat launches uh, or boat lifts sorry along the lake or the marina itself the boat launches that is more of a different story than say the drinking water Great. Um, at the uh, marina level, is there a way that you guys measure, you know, the levels there other than just, you know, visually? Well, everybody uses the boards on the marina. Actually, it's funny. I mean, you, you know, it's not much technology, but uh, the uh, inside the marina is the old boards that uh, go along uh, horizontally in the in the marina. And you can sort of say, hey, well, the water's down to the fifth board. But uh, everybody knew the marina last year was getting low. Um, some of the sailboats were having issues. And this is after the city dredged out the marina last year uh, because we had probably about a foot and a half of fill uh, coming in from the lake. The way the marina is built, uh, we have a lot of fill coming in or a lot of movement of water coming into the marina, bringing sediments and filling up the marina. So we dredged it, but the lake is down a lot. And so it'll it'll be uh, interesting to see what happens in April, May here. Do we get a lot of moisture? And And we've been here before. Um, where the lake quickly has gone from being very, very low to now people sandbagging in certain areas on the lake. So, you know, within three years. So we'll see where we go. Uh, but, you know, obviously this spring, uh, everybody's going to be doing a rain dance to try to get uh, some moisture in our lake. How the water comes into Coal Lake is interesting. It comes from the far north up in the Primrose Lake area. And, the, and we have a river that comes from Primrose Lake to Cold Lake. And that sort of fills up uh, the lake uh, in a, in a big way. So, you know, we need the moisture from way up north to come into uh, in down, in, down into the, our system. And then our, our water actually leaves on the east side of the lake and goes into Saskatchewan. Yeah, uh, I know earlier this spring, and I think we talked about this before, uh, just uh, the alarming things that have been happening in the south, um, the Pincher Creek area particularly is what I had seen. Um, and I, I can't imagine, you know, that would have to be pretty historic, I think, if it ever uh, happened up here. Oh, yeah. You know, I think we're in good standing. You know, when I look at all the communities out there in Northeast Numbered, I think we're pretty good. I'm Lloyd Minster gets their water from the North Saskatchewan River. So, you know, I think the river is, is, is okay. Um, so, you know, I don't, we're, we're very fortunate right now up in our area that we probably won't have any communities that I can think of that are going to have a big water issue. But certainly, man, if uh, some of the pitchers in uh, Southern Alberta and the old man system, it is, uh, you know, 100% different. And uh, the one community of very small people, they're paying a, they paid a million dollars a year this past year uh, to just to truck water. And I think the community was less than 500 people. So it is, uh, it is concerning. So, um, you know, the, what the minister is doing uh, for environment and protect, protected areas is just sort of putting out a, to all the municipalities, everybody got the letter. To just let's have a plan. You know, the province is taking this very serious. It's, it's formed up a committee. The big focus is central and southern Alberta, uh, but everybody in the north, you know, we take water for granted. Uh, what what's what's our plan if, if we need one? Well, let's hope that we get some timely rains and uh, you know fairly significant moisture over the coming months. Thank you for your time today, Mayor Copeland. Have a great evening. Okay, thank you. 
Abby St. John joins me now with the weather and it's looking like we might see a few flurries tonight. Yes, there is some chances of some flurries overnight tonight, but uh, it doesn't say that we're going to have any accumulation, which is good. Fingers crossed that that remains, but we saw a fairly nice day out today. Uh, we're currently sitting at minus two, but we are, uh, it was pretty sunny out, a mix of sun and cloud um, throughout the day, which was nice, but it was bright throughout the day. It feels closer to minus 10 with that wind chill, so it does feel a little bit more on the chillier side. Side, but for the most part, it was a relatively nice day out 33 kilometer per hour winds currently, however, so the winds are quite strong, but nothing we're not used to here in Lloyd uh, across Alberta minus one in Wainwright, Vermilion, St. Paul, Bonneville and Cold Lake and zero in Provost, Vegreville, Edmonton and Lac La Biche minus two out in Mar Wayne and in Saskatchewan minus three in Isla Cross, Green Lake and St. Walberg minus one in Pierceland and Macklin. Minus two in Meadow Lake, minus four in Maidstone, and minus seven out in North Battleford. Overnight tonight in North Battleford will drop down to minus 14. So it will be quite cold out and it will be considerably cloudy, uh, 22 kilometer per hour winds. And then tomorrow, about a 55% chance of some snow in the afternoon with little to no accumulation. So not too much snow is predicted to fall. However, winds will be at 30 kilometers per hour with a daytime high of minus one. But there will be a little bit of sun throughout the day as well. Overnight tonight in Cold Lake will drop down to minus 7, a 65% chance of some snow at times late in the evening with little to no accumulation, 19 kilometer per hour winds. And then tomorrow, a daytime high of zero breezy in the morning, uh, chilly with intermittent snow, and it's accumulating about 3 to 6 centimeters is predicted, about a 94% chance of that happening, 19 kilometer per hour winds. Overnight tonight here in Lloyd Minster will drop down to minus 11. A little bit of snow at time, like I said earlier, but uh, otherwise no accumulation. A little bit possibly, but for the most part it shouldn't stick around. Uh, but it will be considerably cloudy with 22 kilometer per hour winds. And then tomorrow, uh, minus 11 around 6 a.m. Cloudy skies, which should give way and we should have a sunny day throughout after that. 22 kilometer per hour winds, which will fluctuate throughout the day. S minus six by around noontime, minus one at around 6 p.m. and minus five at midnight, mostly cloudy at that point in time. Over the next three days here in the border city, a high of zero and a low of minus nine for tomorrow. And then on Thursday, expect a cloudy day out with a high of minus one and a low of minus nine. And then on Friday, expect another cloudy day as well with a high of minus one and a low of minus 11. That is a first look at your evening weather forecast. We'll have more news coming up after the break. Sask Alta Hockey League season came to a close this past weekend with the league final between the Paradise Hill Hawks and the Lashburn Flyers. Our Thomas Wildman has more with a wrap of the final game. Game six of the Sask Alta League finals took place in Lashburn and the rink was completely filled up with many fans of the Lashburn Flyers, but also a strong showing of fans of the Paradise Hill Hawks. The Hawks only needed one more win to secure the Rod Bouton Cup. However, the Flyers weren't going down without a fight and started off the scoring. Rob Keller would open up the scoring for the Flyers. However, later the Hawks would answer back with three goals coming from Brett Schottler, Ted Creech, and Scott Mikulski. The Flyers would grab a last second goal from Darian Gamble to bring the score within one, as at the end of the first, the Hawks would lead 3-2. Into the second, the teams would trade goals on the power play, with Schottler and Gamble hitting the score sheet once again, but the Hawks would score two more unanswered goals from Justin Young and Mikulski's second of the night. Kaylor Hope would grab another goal late for the Flyers, but they still trailed by two goals heading into the third. The Hawks shut down the Flyers throughout most of the third, and then Mikulski would ice the game. That hat-trick goal would give the Hawks a three-goal lead, and while Justin Bill would score for the Flyers late with the goalie pulled, the Flyers couldn't catch up, giving the Paradise Hill Hawks their first championship since the team rejoined the league. Honestly, it feels really good. Uh, 
we started this team up uh, about 10 years ago and uh, there's a good group of us, I think there's about 10 of us that, that have stuck through since the start and uh, it means the world. It means the world to us to, to always that thing and to have all the fans in the stands. It feels good. The team went through many years of work and play to come to this point, but it's more than just the players. The whole community came together to help get this win. Well, you know, it starts with all the staff and all the community, everyone cooking burgers behind the scenes, the Zamboni on the rink, and everyone sharpening skates, everything, you know, the 50-50, there's so many people behind the scenes that, you know, don't get talked about, and they really deserve a lot of this credit, too, but, and then, you know, we get to the ice, and we just had all four lines were rolling, everyone was working hard, um, just so happy right now, it's just, it's been a long time coming. Thomas Wildman, Primetime, Local News. Abby St. John is back in now to take a second look at our weather forecast. Thanks so much, Leanne. We're currently sitting at minus 2. Feels closer to minus 10 with that wind chill. We did see a fairly nice day out today. Uh, nice sun throughout. A little bit of cloud coverage too. But wind speeds currently at 33 kilometers per hour. So it is quite windy out. Across Alberta, minus 1 in Cold Lake. Minus 4 in Red Deer. 0 out in Edmonton. Minus 2 in Athabasca. Plus 2 in Rocky Mountain House. 5 in White Court. 10 in Edson. And 9 out in Jasper. In Saskatchewan, minus 1 in Meadow Lake, minus 7 in North Battleford and Saskatoon, and minus 6 in Prince Albert and in Melfort. If we head up north in Saskatchewan, minus 1 in Uranium City, minus 2 in Stony Rapids, Losh and Buffalo Narrows, minus 6 in Walston Lake and in Flin Flon, and minus 5 in South End. In Alberta, 1 in Fort Chippewan, 2 in Fort Mac in High Level, also out in Slave Lake, 7 in Peace River, and 13 down in Grand Prairie. In uh, down south in Alberta, minus two in Coronation and in Lethbridge, minus three in Medicine Hat and in Calgary and four out in Banff. In Saskatchewan, minus two in Kindersley, minus nine in Yorkton, minus five in Regina, minus four in Moose Jaw, minus three in Swift Current and minus seven out in Estevan. And if we go overnight tonight in North Battleford, we'll drop down to minus 14, considerably cloudy um, and it will feel quite cold. 22 kilometer per hour winds. Overnight tonight in Cold Lake will drop down to minus 7, considerably cloudy as well, and there's about a 65% chance of some snow later on in the evening with little to no accumulation, 19 kilometer per hour winds, and that snowfall will carry over into tomorrow as well. And then more overnight temperatures across the region, minus 12 in Meadow Lake, uh, minus 7 in Bonneville, minus 8 in Provost, minus 14 in Isle of Cross, and minus 12 also out in Paradise Hill. Uh, about an 88% chance of some snowfall in Bonneville, accumulating about 2 to 4 centimeters. 66% chance of some snowfall out in Provost as well. And then more overnight temperatures and more snowfall is predicted as well. Minus 7 in Murnham and Pierceland, minus 11 in Unity, minus 8 in Wainwright, and minus 5 out in Calgary. 90% chance of snowfall in Murnham, 2 to 4 centimeters is predicted. 59% chance of some snowfall mainly early on in the evening um, in Unity, and a 72% chance of snowfall mainly later on in the evening out in Wainwright. Overnight tonight here in Lloydminster will drop down to minus 11 a little bit snow at times this evening about a 65 percent chance and then it's predicted to have a little to no accumulation otherwise um, and about 22 kilometer per hour winds over the next seven days here in the border city a high of zero and a low of minus nine with a mix of sun and cloud on Thursday, expect a cloudy day with a high of minus 1 and a low of minus 9. High of minus 1 is on Friday with a low of minus 11 with a cloudy condition as well. On Saturday, there's about a 65% chance of some morning snow with a high of 0 and a low of minus 11. And then on Sunday, it'll be mostly cloudy, but we should see a little bit of sun with a high of plus 4 and a low of minus 6. And then we get back back up into the double digits above zero on Monday with a high of 
plus 11 and a low of minus one. So it's definitely going to be a little bit warmer starting next week. And then on Tuesday, a high of plus 13 and a low of minus two with a mix of sun and cloud. So this week hasn't been too, too great weather wise, but we are looking forward to warmer temperatures later on next week. That is a look at your seven day forecast. We'll have more news coming up after the break. back at Border Falls Animal Shelter for another edition of Pet Project and today we have a gorgeous tabby cat named Thomas O'Malley and he is so incredibly sweet from the moment we opened up the door so tell me about how he came to be at the shelter and a little bit about his personality. Yeah so Thomas O'Malley came to us at the end of February and he was actually found as a stray in McLaughlin, Alberta. Um, he looks a little rough around the edges, but he's very laid back. He's one of those cute tomcats that has the really big cheeks. And as you can see, his personality is very chill. Mm -hmm. He hangs out and kind of does his own thing, loves attention, and is very much a foodie and gets excited when it's mealtime. So he would make someone a really great companion if you are at home a lot and can just give him cuddles, but he's also not a super needy cat. Like he likes attention, but he'll hang out on his own too. So nice, well-rounded guy. <laughs> And how is he with other animals, say cats, or has he been introduced to dogs? How about, how is he with uh, other creatures? <laughs> he seems fairly laid back. We have not introduced him to dogs directly, but I do think a cat friendly dog that would give him his space and not be pushy would be fine. Um, he's very loving, so I think he would be fine with kids as well as, as long as it's older kids that understand and aren't packing him around. Um, when he went to Lakeland College for his neuter surgery, they did notice he has some mild arthritis happening in his back uh, right leg, I believe it was, or hip. So he is the senior adoption price, even though we estimated his age to only be about six years old. So. Yeah. Well, despite that, he is a very, very <laughs> yeah. sweet cat. And you're right. He just, we expected him to jump out as most cats would do, mm -hmm. but he just sat here, accepted the pets that yeah. he's been given. And, you know, and then now he's just two of his favorite things, yes. cuddles and food. <laughs> um, and now over the weekend uh, or over the past week, PetSmart had their adoption event and yeah. you guys were able to get quite a bit of, a, quite a number of adoptions. Tell yeah. me about that and uh, how you guys are doing with numbers. Yeah, so we were really fortunate. It was more than we were expecting for the week and we were actually able to complete 10 adoptions to different families in, around the city. Um, so we adopted out five adult cats, four kittens, and one dog during our adoption event. Um, so that was really exciting. They all went to really great families and the cats were indoor only homes and the dog had been pre-approved. So we were really thankful for that and to kind of give us some wiggle room at the shelter so that we're not as over capacity with cats at least. Um, so yeah, we were very thankful to be able to be there for that event and to everybody who donated as well. Um, the PetSmart staff was really awesome at gathering donations for us and asking people to donate to our cause. So we have a number of donations of food and things to actually pick up this week as well. And that's very exciting, especially, yeah. you know, with PetSmart, it's PetSmart's campaign and their mm -hmm. event. So it's awesome that you guys were able to have so many adoptions and yes. such a great turnout. Um, now you have another fundraiser going on currently that ends on the 1st. Yeah. Tell me what uh, people should know about it. So if you go onto our Facebook page or on the website, you can see it's Flora and Company Greenhouse, and she's actually donating 15% of all proceeds. So there's raspberries on there, there's some flowers, um, so lots of different things you can choose from for plants, and so you can get your garden started while supporting the shelter, which is awesome. And you can order all this week until April 1st. Which is very exciting and a, and a unique fundraiser yeah. as well. And of course, with spring right around the corner, it's perfect <laughs> Good for all those green thumbs out there who yeah. want to start. I know my family is really into gardening, so mm -hmm. they'll probably get a head start on that as yeah. well. So that's awesome. Um, now, Easter is fast approaching. It is this week. We had good. Yeah. We have Good Friday on Friday, and then Easter Monday. Uh, what are your hours of operation? Just so people should know um, if they do find strays or if they have any donations or whatever they need. You bet. So we are normal hours this week, except for Friday. We will be closed to the public on Friday, but our staff is here caring for the animals. Um, so if you have a pet go missing or have questions, you can still call in. If we miss you, leave a voicemail, and we call back as soon as we're done dealing with um, feedings and 
and cleaning of the animals' kennels. Um, and then we're back to business on Saturday, normal hours from 12 to 6 for the public on Saturday. And then we're normally closed Sunday and Monday as a general rule of thumb, so it doesn't really affect us for those. And then back to normal hours the following week. So just Good Friday that will be closed to the public. Wonderful. Now uh, I'm sure people are excited about an update on the yes. puppies. How are they doing? Are they still as chunky as ever? <laughs> They're actually huge. So I hadn't <laughs> seen them in a bit and I went in to check them out today and they are huge. They are thick and roly-poly. They are so happy. They're ripping around and doing zoomies in the room um, and the girls are actually going to be posting them for foster to adopt homes in the next few days here. So mom is done feeding them. They are eating their new diet very well. Um, and yeah, they are growing like weeds, so they will be looking for hopefully adoptive families in the very near future, and then we will be working with those families to get them still neutered and spayed through border paws. Which is very, very exciting, yeah. and you know, they're as cute as ever, so mm -hmm. uh, I'm sure you won't have any problems finding yeah. adopting, adopted families. Now finally, same as always, are there any donations that you're in need of? So with the puppies growing the way that they are, we are definitely in need of canned food donations for the dogs, so wet food again. Um, and then also adult cat kibble donations, um, litter pans if you want to purchase something for the shelter, we are in need of cat litter pans. And um, as spring approaches, we want the dogs to be outside playing more, so we are going to be looking at the hard plastic um, toys that are harder for them to wreck, so like jolly balls and that kind of stuff, or even big rubber tire toys and tug toys and things like that that we can have outdoors safely for them to play with. Awesome. Well, that's very exciting, especially with yes. spring, and it's going to be great having them outside more. Yeah, they um, love it. Yes, exactly, especially with it being done in the back. Well, thank you so much for joining me again, and Thomas, uh, <laughs> he he was the perfect guest. I mean, he didn't escape. He ate um, his food, <laughs> and he accepted his pets, and yes. I think that pretty much sums up his personality. Yes. So I don't think he'll have any issues finding his forever home. Furniture set and design supplied by Furniture Gallery, downtown Lloyd Minster. I'm joined by Michaela Solomon with SGI talking about the risks of potential insurance frauds and vehicle thefts in our area. Michaela, thank you so much for your time today. How's it going? Great. Thanks for having me. So can you tell me a bit about these false insurance claims that you are seeing? Uh, for sure. So. I guess the one thing we want to highlight is to make sure everybody's being honest when they file an insurance claim. So, so what we're seeing with a bit of these examples is some instances where people uh, misrepresented the truth or uh, omitted important information in order to uh, claim an insurance benefit that they weren't necessarily entitled to. Uh, so this is really important to SGI because uh, March, I'll say, is fraud prevention month. And it's important for us to prevent fraud because we want to make sure we're not paying out fraudulent claims. This helps us keep premium costs low for our honest customers. And what would someone do if they reported something that they thought was true but ended up being false? So one of the key concepts about insurance is representing the information to, to the best of your abilities um, in the utmost good faith. Um, so making sure that you're being honest when you file a claim is really important and if there's any information that you that you remember after the fact that you maybe omitted without meaning to, just make sure you come back to your um, the, the claim support staff that you're dealing with and making sure that you're fleshing out that information to the best of your abilities. That makes sense. And Michaela, there's been a big rise uh, across the country actually in vehicle thefts. How can people better protect their cars here? Uh, definitely. So one thing that we want to make sure that people aren't doing is leaving your vehicle, uh, your keys in your vehicle. So uh, I know we just came out of uh, a, a bit of a cold snap in the winter. Um, you know, people want to warm up their cars before they hop into them, but it's really important to make sure you're uh, doing that without the keys in the vehicle, making sure that you're doing the things you can do to protect yourself from a vehicle theft. Uh, so making sure you're starting the car with the remote starter, not leaving the keys in the car, making sure it's always locked uh, before you head into the house and parking in the garage if you can is always a, a helpful tip. And going back to the insurance topic as well, have you seen a rise in these insurance scams? Um, so, so for SGI, I'll say the numbers that we reported in this release are fairly consistent with what we see year to year. Uh, we average roughly about $6 million in savings uh, because of the work that our special investigations unit does to uh, investigate uh, suspected insurance frauds and, and catch them before they get paid out. 
Thanks so much again for your time today, Michaela, and uh, thanks again for the insight. Yeah, anytime. King Charles will attend an Easter service at the chapel at Windsor Castle on Sunday. It'll be the first major appearance for the monarch since he was diagnosed with cancer in February. He will be accompanied by his wife and members of the royal family for a smaller than usual event. The Prince and Princess of Wales are not expected to attend as Kate announced she is undergoing cancer treatment. It's interesting. I mean, I'm not really too interested in the royal family anymore now that Queen Elizabeth is no longer with us. Um, yeah, I mean, he's old, so I'm not shocked by, you know, <laughs> his cancer announcement. And a lot of people are saying that they, are, they wouldn't be shocked if, you know, William ended up on the throne by the end of this year. Yeah. And I wouldn't be shocked either. Um, it is really sad about Kate, um, yeah. her cancer announcement too. That is really sad. And hopefully she gets better and her treatment works. Yeah, they just need to give them a little bit of privacy, I think, so. That's all we have for you this evening. Thanks for joining us. Have a good night.